Now that gas is more expensive than ever, people are talking about fuel-efficient cars with small engines and an appetite of an anorexic person. Well, that's not what we'll be doing here. Instead, let's talk about cars that go through a full tank of fuel faster than my wife goes through my entire YouTube revenue. God damn it, honey, another pair of shoes? <sighs> hey guys, I'm broke, and this is my list of the thirstiest gas guzzlers ever made. But before we go, I'll be showing only cars from the 70s or younger. The reason? That's when different agencies started testing for MPG with the standardized city highway combined test. I'm sure the 1937 Bugatti Royale, which weighs 3 tons and has a 12.3 liter engine, can outdrink any of these cars I'm about to mention, but without proper testing, we can only guess by how much. So with that in mind, let's start with a world favorite, an SUV. And while we're at it, let's start with the worst one, the 1984 Ford Bronco. It does 10, 10 MPG, which puts it here. It's big, it's heavy, less curvy than a Lego brick, had an all-wheel drive, and most importantly, it was very popular. Over 300,000 Bronco 2s were sold, of which a good chunk was with a big 5.8 liter V8 and a three-speed auto. Just three. That's not a very nature-friendly combo there, is it? But allow me to explain just how bad this number is. Let's say that I have a Bronco, and you have a brand new 2023 Toyota Corolla, you know, the most average modern car you can buy today. Running these two for five years will cost me $20,000 more in fuel alone. 20000 That's how much the Corolla cost. And if you think that modern full-size SUVs are much better, they aren't. Take the Lexus LX570, for example, which is a big-ass Toyota, actually. It does 14 mpg. That's just one mile per gallon better than the Jeep Trackhawk. And the Jeep has a 700-horsepower supercharged Hellcat engine. How is that even possible? Another one that will surprise you is the 1994 Saab. 9,000! It's a small compact car, but with something of a beer belly. The 2.3 liter four cylinder under the hood was slightly larger than the average in this class of vehicles, but it's not like it was tuned for big power. Still, the 9,000 could travel only 18 miles on a gallon. How? It's not fast, it's not heavy, not particularly luxurious, and yet it still drinks like a 600 horsepower Mercedes E63 AMG. But hey, if you're looking for the worst gas guzzling car made for a common person, then we have to go back to the USA, baby. Check this out. The 1985 Dodge Diplomat was a mainstream mid-sized sedan, but there was nothing mainstream about what lay under the hood. A 5.2 liter V8. That's a bit excessive, don't you think? You'd have Bob here commuting to work, which for his sake is at an oil field because the best that he can get out of his not so special in any way car is 12 miles to the gallon, combined. How are these cars selling at all? But enough about this mainstream stuff. Let's talk about the vehicles where you'd expect the MPG figure to be bad, like with Rolls Royce. Older new all Rollses are always uncompromising. They come with the best materials, best sound insulations, the most comfortable seats, and of course, some big engines to move all that weight around. In the case of the 1984 Silver Spur, we're talking six and three quarters V8, which when it comes into consuming those dead dinos, can put some yachts to shame. The Spur does nine, nine miles per gallon. Get the stretch limo version and the number drops even further. Such is life when money is no object. Even today, the thirstiest luxury car you can get is, again, the Rolls. Doesn't matter which model you pick, the gigantic Phantom, the smaller Ghost, or the Cunnilingus SUV. They all chug a gallon of fuel every 14 miles. And you thought that Brits are all about restraints and understatement. Wrong. Also, I know that the Pullmans will be mentioned in the comments, so here's how they stack up. Boom and boom. Moving on with the workhorse of the modern age, the pickup truck. These behemoths are so mighty that they could probably tow an entire gas station, while also emptying it at an alarmingly fast rate. Anyway, the most capable trucks these days, be it Chevy, Ford, or Dodge, they all do 16 MPG without pulling any cargo. Sounds like a lot, but for these beasts of such size, that's pretty good if you ask me. The trick is that all of them run on diesel, and diesel engines are more fuel efficient. Let me show you just how bad gas trucks can be otherwise. This 
is the 1984 Dodge Ram 250, which, if you spec it with an all-wheel drive, a big V8, and a three-speed auto, you'll get only 9 MPG out of it. As workhorses go, this is not very profitable. Dodge never shied away from shoving thirsty engines into the Ram. Today, you can get the TRX version, which has the 6.2-liter supercharged Hellcat engine. That one does 12 miles to the gallon. But that's nothing compared to the Ram SRT10, which had the 8.3-liter Viper engine. This 10 in the SRT10 stands for the number of cylinders arranged in a V, as well as the miles it can cover on a single gallon of fuel. Power! Speaking of the Viper, first it had a 8-liter engine, but Dodge thought, hmm, yeah, that's kind of small. Then came the 8.3-liter, and still they were like, huh, there's more space under the hood. And finally, the 8.4-liter V10, or in other words, the biggest engine ever fitted in a modern car. That, by the way, was at a time when other manufacturers were downsizing. So how fuel-efficient are Vipers? 13 MPG at the worst, up to 16 at the best. Wait, 16 out of the biggest engine ever? That's doubtful, but then again, that's what the EPA says. Anyway, Bugatti Chiron has a chungus of an engine too. Eight liters, 16 cylinders, and four turbos forcing power all the way up to 1500. <laughs> Is that enough to drink the Viper under the table? Yes. The Bugatti does 11 MPG. Amateurs. The Lamborghini CN can do even worse than Bugatti. Four cylinders less, no turbos, hybrid tech, the ability to shut off half the engine in order to save some fuel, and yet it does 10 miles per gallon. That makes no sense at all. But such is the world of high performance. Take these two Ford GTs, for example, a supercharged V8 versus an eco-boosted V6 and the V6 drinks more, despite being eco. Not much more, but it's more. Anyway, Bugatti isn't giving up just yet. Compared to the regular Chiron, the track-focused Chiron per sport has a less slippery body thanks to all that aero. The engine revs higher because the gear ratios are closer together. And the final number is another nine. What about the old supercars, I hear you asking? Older generations are generally more into drinking, and the same should be true with the cars that go fast. Turns out, it is. Lamborghini Countach, the myth, the legend, the car that makes your chest hair grow thicker. It does seven miles per gallon. That makes it the biggest drunkard ever tested by the EPA, which is quite an achievement. A new record! But hey, let's throw in a few more notorious gas guzzlers to see how they stack up. The Mazda RX-7 is, to this day, the most powerful road-legal car with a rotary Wankel engine. 280 horsepower out of a puny 1.3-liter turbo, but keep in mind, it's rotary, so this 1.3 is roughly equivalent to a 2.6-liter piston engine. The MPG? 18. That's not very bad, but it gets worse because rotary engines are notorious for using more lubricant than your average OnlyFans girl, so add another 20 MPG of motor oil to that equation, too. I mentioned the Pullman earlier. Well, there's also the Armored Guard version, which is the heaviest car you can buy today. It weighs over 12,000 pounds. That's more than, well, whatever this GMC thing is. Tons of Kevlar aside, the Guard also has six seats, three TVs, a million buttons, and a V12 with a pair of turbos stuck to it. So, want to guess the MPG? It's 11.8. That's not bad, but then again, that's what Mercedes says. So take it with a pinch of salt. The holy trinity of hypercars? Ferrari does 14, McLaren 17, the Porsche can do an incredible 22 MPG. I shouldn't be surprised though, it is a hybrid. As for the H1, this military vehicle turned get to the chopper! Mobile comes with all the right stuff to make that MPG number go down. Heavy, zero in the aerodynamics department, and a large Detroit-made V8. A diesel V8 at that, and still, the H1 could do only 10 MPG. This Freightliner semi can do the same, while hauling 76,000 pounds. How? I mentioned the V8 Dodge Diplomat. Well, Europe has its counterpart too, the Opel Diplomat 5.4. 
it could do 10.7 mpg, which was worse than its American brother. Granted, these things weren't meant for the regular Joes, but still, fuel is so much more expensive over on the old continent, and the big Opel was thirstier even than the flagship model from their Mercedes rival. These are some older cars that haven't been tested properly, so the source is… Trust me, dude! <sighs> And what about the old muscle cars? Well, the 1968 Charger RT with a 440 V8 allegedly dips as low as 8.5 mpg. An enormous Cadillac Eldorado with an even more enormous 500 cubic inches V8 could do 8, while the big, brash, and badass 1973 Lincoln Continental reportedly did 7. And that's as low as the official champion of drinking juice. But if we will go down the trust me dude route, then how about the Rambo Lambo? the LM002. It shares the same insatiable V12 from the Countach, but it weighs so much more and has an all-wheel drive. The result? 5.6. 5.6. My fun uncle couldn't drink that much. More to the point, 5.6 MPG is also worse than a Formula One car, and those things go full throttle as much as possible. There's no city highway combined figure in racing. It's just speed, and yet less than the Rambo. That's insane. But I'll leave you with an even more incredible stat. When James May took the Veyron to its top speed, he said that at 250 miles an hour, a full tank of fuel will be emptied in 12 minutes. Given that the tank can hold 26.4 gallons of fuel, we calculate that at top speed, the Veyron does 1.88 miles per gallon. And while we're going down the list, tell me where your car would end up on it. How important is fuel economy for you anyway? And lastly, this I always find interesting to hear, how much is fuel in your country right now? Write in the comments, like, subscribe, the usual crap, and I'll see you in the next one.